Good evening and thanks for joining us. It's become a sad fact of life in North America. Millions of people are obese or overweight and the numbers are rising. Now the American Medical Association says it is time for a major shift in how we think about it. It has officially designated obesity as a disease, a disease that requires medical treatment and prevention. As Robin Gill reports, it's one more step in the evolution of social attitudes towards obesity. Dana Neiman had to undergo weight loss surgery to lose 100 pounds. She has another 100 to go. I've been overweight my entire life. I always joked that I was born overweight. I was born 10 pounds, 4 ounces. Obesity is a massive problem right across North America. One in three Americans suffers from it, and Canada isn't far behind. One in four Canadians is considered obese. In America, in a single generation, the rate of obesity has doubled in adults and tripled in children, which is why the American Medical Association is labeling obesity as a disease. At the Obesity Network in Edmonton, doctors have been trying to make that same distinction in Canada. Obesity treatments are either do-it-yourself or you can spend you know, a few thousand dollars on the next crash diet uh, at your local slimming center. Uh, you, you, know, you know, that needs to change. We need to look at obesity as being a medical condition that requires professional help. But the Canadian Medical Association says there is no policy to make that change here. We certainly encourage our physicians always to treat any kind of condition in a holistic manner. And I think that's the whole point of putting the label disease on it, is so that we actually try to think of it not just as a risk factor. A recent study by Canada's public health agency found that obesity cost the healthcare system $7.1 billion because of its association with 18 chronic diseases. We're seeing more and more of it in younger people, and we know that that is going to uh, lead to increased mental health costs and also increased diabetes costs. But there are concerns that the label will give overweight people an excuse not to change their habits. You have to look at behavioral interventions, you have to look at psychological treatments, you have to look at medical treatments, and unfortunately, ultimately, for many patients, you might have to look at surgical treatments. For Dana Neiman, medical intervention was her only option. I have tried and tried and tried to lose weight and was unsuccessful. You know, there's something predisposed inside of me genetically. The AMA's decision isn't binding, but it's giving doctors another tool to fight this growing epidemic. Robin Gill, Global News, Vancouver. And to explore this a little further is our health specialist, Dr. Ali Zentner. Obesity is your area of expertise. What did you make of this? How important is this shift in the it, way we view obesity? This was something we knew in the scientific community all along. All it's done, quite honestly, is bring it to the forefront from a discussion perspective. So what we now allow is for the opportunity for further treatments with regards to obesity. We impart the importance of diagnosis and addressing the problem in everyday medical communities. And then most importantly, we allow for education of our next generation of physicians on how to treat this. From a societal perspective, what we've done now is allow for empathy to reign free. You know, this is a disease. These people deserve a sense of empathy towards what they're struggling with. And, and remove some of the social stigma that exists now. Right? I, I would hope, absolutely. I think we have a long way to go, but this is definitely a good beginning. Is there a fear that uh, once this is a considered a disease, people will expect there's an easy cure or a pill? You know, that's the criticism of this argument is that that one, you're insisting on, on a cure, and also what you're doing is you're calling 25% of Canadians or 30% of Americans sick. sick. But again, this is a chronic illness, and it, it deserves management. There is no cure, and just like people with high blood pressure or high cholesterol, uh, those diseases can be managed, and people can go on to live very healthy, fruitful lives. So for people who you treat in your clinic, what will they take away from this? I, I think it's a legitimacy that they've long been looking for, that this disease isn't their fault per se, but it's now their responsibility. All right, Dr. Ali Zentner, thank you. Thank